Hi peoples, today we will be looking at the gods and goddesses of the Hittites, an Indo-European people that invaded Asia Minor from the east. By the middle of the 2nd millennium BCE, they had established an empire covering the greater part of the region. Centered in modern day Turkey, Syria and parts of Iraq, while their capital, Hattusa, was located in central Anatolia. The empire declined after 1200 BCE, owing to other Indo-European invasions and the growing power of Assyria. The Hittites called their pantheon of gods and goddesses the Thousand Gods, and there may indeed have been that many, as the number of divine names known from Hittite writings today is slightly more than 600. However, the number of deities worshipped in any one Hittite city or town would be much smaller, likely only a few, with a preference for a local fertility god, or the most powerful of the gods, Tarun. Let's take a look at the most important Hittite gods and goddesses. The god of weather, thunder and the king of the gods was known as Tarun, Taru or Teshup, and was perhaps the most important of the deities. He was the one who decided where the crops would be fertile. Similar to Zeus from Greek mythology, Tarun and his allies overthrew Kumarbi before him, and cast him and his children into the underworld. Kumarbi was the king of the gods before Tarun. He was associated with grain and prosperity. The Hittites' neighbor, the Hurrians, worshipped Kumarbi as their chief god, while the Hittites thought of him as living in the underworld. Arina, Ariniti, or Ishtanu, was the goddess of the sun and the main consort of Tarun. Originally, it seems as if Arina was the principal deity and patron of the Hittite empire and monarchy, with Tarun second to her own importance, indicating that she probably originated in matriarchal times. Hanwasuit was the goddess of thrones, who granted the Hittite kings the right to rule over humans. As with other empires, the Hittites believed they had a divine right to be kings. Inara was the goddess of wild animals and the steppe, and was similar to the Greek goddess Artemis. She was also the daughter of Tarun. The god of wisdom, Aas, was consulted by the other gods on matters of importance, such as how to overthrow the other gods and seize power. Demonstrating the syncretic nature of Hittite polytheism, this god was likely derived from the Mesopotamian god Ea. The great mother or grandmother goddess was Hanahana, who brought wisdom and motherhood to human civilization. She appears in a number of Hittite myths and tends to help in solving the problems faced by other gods in them. Shahushka was the goddess of love, war, fertility, rage and healing, and was also one of Tarun's consorts. Interestingly, she was the highest ranking goddess of the Hurrian pantheon, from where she was adopted by the Hittites. The Hurrians associated her with Nineveh, but she was also worshipped in many other centres associated with this culture, from Anatolian cities in Kizuvatna, through Alalakh and Ugarit in Syria, to Nuzi and Ulami in northeastern Mesopotamia. She was also worshipped in southern Mesopotamia, where she came to be associated with Ishtar. And lastly we have Lilwani, the deity of the underworld and of volcanic flames. Interestingly, Lalwani was originally male, but later became female. As always, thank you so very much for watching. Please support me by subscribing to the channel and by liking and sharing this video. Till next time, bye bye.